Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 47, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if I don't read them on Strange World, which I probably won't because there's too many phone calls, I will do a separate email YouTube thing here. So let's, get, let's get right to it, shall we? The first one is called Flat Earth Clue sent by Ray. It says, hey Mark, so does a rainbow prove the earth to be flat? No, no, the rainbow with its curved dome-like structure thing doesn't prove the earth to be flat, but it is really interesting because we can't create rainbows indoors without water and a reflective surface and a light source, of course. So if that's what we have to do with the inside, what is the reflective surface on the outside is it a dome-like structure which we can't see from the ground possible never know I kind of like it this one's called flat earth mark hello how are you can you explain the tides the moon phases the ellipses and what else will help me prove flat earth I would appreciate it very much becoming a flat earther in 2016 I don't have that knowledge thank you regards Darlene from Australia Thank you, Darlene. And if, again, when it comes to the tides, the moon phases, the ellipses, uh, okay, there's two different things here. Anything in the sky is just part of the projection system. Nothing different than a giant planetarium you're looking up there. We can do this in a planetarium now. Waxing, waning crescents, blood moons, comets, the, the stars going across the sky. We can do this inside a structure right now. When it comes to the tides, the gravitational force, you're going to have to do some digging on your own, which is what does science say that gravity is? Remember, Neil deGrasse Tyson came out sometime, what was it last year or the year before that, where he says, and in, in, any science will tell, scientist will tell you this, that they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does, the symptoms of gravity. So if it's a magical molecular magnet, then what is it on a flat earth? Pretty much a magical molecular magnet. Science, science and Flat Earth are pretty much a push on that one. This one's called, I got a VIP ticket for FE 2017. I jumped on an extra VIP ticket for FE 2017. Looking forward to meeting you and others. My eldest son is now going to use my formerly obtained online ticket. In case this is interesting, I brought up the FE subject with a few friends, mostly Christians, but not all. Curiously, I see no correlation to being a Christian or not in the reactions. The reactions I get in order of frequency are one cannot accept it because they've seen the curvature supposedly or they've circumnavigated the globe in the Navy. I happen to know many Navy vets or they're not willing to even entertain it or they accept it but say it can never be proven until the Lord returns shows us so it doesn't matter many of these struggle with why the powers to be would want to deceive us so i try to explain it because they refuse to accept the creator which they would be forced to do otherwise or they accept it and think it matters for others to know for myself i'm trying to decide how much it matters or how much it's likely to make a difference for others salvation or effectiveness in our time. I do think that scientism is at the core of the great deception and keeps some from even considering eternal life. I'm also working through issues that are seemingly typically related to or is adverse to FE advocates, such as the pre-tribulation rapture and Christian Zionism. I have been strongly in the camp for both. I've been careful to study not tossed by every wind of doctrine. Safe travels, and Lord bless you for all you do. Don't let the ballers get you down either. Ted from Raleigh, North Carolina. Awesome. This one's called God's Enclosed Flat Earth Investigation, full documentary, parts 1 through 12. I'm guessing that's probably... Uh, it's weird. I, I haven't even looked that one up. I'm going to have to find that one. <laughs> it's obviously a mirror of Flat Earth Clues. Dear Mark Sargent, I just finished watching your documentary and it was very interesting and convincing. I appreciate you making this video. I only wish I could find a copy of this documentary translated into Spanish because my husband is Hispanic 
and doesn't understand English completely. We have discussed the possibility of the Earth being flat, and he, of course, thinks that I am crazy for believing something so far-fetched from what today's society believes. So my question is, if you know if your documentary has been translated into Spanish, if so, where can I find a copy? Thank you. Sincerely, Rhonda Vasquez. And yeah, it has been translated in Spanish, and I don't know where it is, so I will put this in my to-do after I'm done reading, and I will find it for somewhere on YouTube. Uh, if she's, if you're listening, uh, just look up Flat Earth Clues Spanish or Espanol, and you should be able to find it. But I will, I will dig it around for you a little bit. This one's called Flat Earth Caller. Listen to August 9th. Uh, let's see. Hi, Mark. My name is Whitney. I've been watching everyone's stuff on Flat Earth for likely a couple of years now. I know that you like to post short clips of FE when FE is brought to the attention of media. 6.30 Ched is one of the main news, CHED, is one of the main news talk shows in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada and surrounding area. This clip is from the Ryan Jesperson show. He is on from 9 a.m. until um, noon. I listen every day and was always wondering how to bring up the subject. Anyway, this listener by the name of Mike did it. The show had a theme of confess your unpopular opinion. Fast forward to 18 minutes, 36 seconds, and a listener by the name of Mike takes the air. Ryan Jesperson's reaction is classic. The link is from the podcast off of iTunes. I hope it works. P.S. Have you seen John McIntyre's new video? They are interesting, but don't seem to be as accurate as his mountain of evidence video. Keep up the good work. This is my first time emailing, listen to August 9th, Jesper, Jesperson, 10, Death by Text, The Case Against Michelle Carter. Okay, so this is the Ryan Jesperson Show, AM 630. I will check it out. I, there's actually no link to it here, but I will see if I can dig it up. And you know, I'll put that in my list of things to check out. Thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth Video on YouTube. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I watched your video entitled They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever, and I have some questions for you concerning the Flat Earth Theory. Oh, boy. And uh, number one, on the map of the Flat Earth and the North Pole is at the center with all the other continents around it. At the edge of the Flat Earth is the Ice Barrier. So where is the South Pole? There is no South Pole. That's my answer. In other words, how do you have poles on a flat surface? You don't. You have a magnetic center, and then the outside is just a weaker weaker magnetic force, if at all. Two, do you believe in the shifting of the poles? Uh, not so much, no. I mean, the North Pole might be able to move around. If it's a magnetic force underneath it, then yeah, there might be something that, that deviates and wobbles kind of from here, here to there, but on the South Pole, no. Three, are you really saying that all of the Earth-based and space te telescopes are just looking at the ceiling of the dome? Yes, I am. These telescopes are extremely powerful and can be used to see far beyond miles. Oh boy, uh, probably not his native language being English. They, they see much further to the distance of distances of light years. Yeah, says who? Who defined light years? Four, how does restricting us to this dome explain UFOs? Well, there's spaceships flying around up there, but are they really spaceships if there's no space? Being able to enter and leave at their discretion, or is it that they are friends with the creators? Could be either. The Bible talks about the gods of heaven saw the daughters of earth were fair and came down and mated with them. So did these gods of heaven live in the enclosed system or outside of it? Don't know. Could be either. Five, how do you explain earthquakes? Uh, how do you explain earthquakes? I think the tectonic plates are still in, in, in place, but they're just not on a globe. Tides in the ocean if the moon is just a painting. Gravitational force. Tides are controlled from underneath. Meteors. Uh, throwing a rock into an aquarium. Basically, it's at high, metal ore at high speed, railgun technology, let the atmosphere burn it up on the way down. Try not to aim at cities. Number six, and this is, this is the last question. How do you explain how boats seem to sink <laughs> into the horizon as they get further away from you? They don't. You thought they did until HD camera technology came out. Now, if you look, they just fade away into the Fata Morgana or the atmospheric distortion. They don't. They never sink over the horizon anymore. Anyway, I enjoyed the video, even though there are parts that are debatable. Debatable, yes. Unprovable? Well, to be determined. All right, this one's called Satellites. Mark, hi, I watch your videos, and they are awesome. Thank you. Quick question. I keep hearing 
there aren't any satellites. Is that true? Like GPS. Uh, I don't think there's any GPS satellites. 32 satellites designed by the U.S. military with blanket coverage over the entire globe? No. Do I think there's stuff up there? Yes, I've seen it with night vision. There's stuff up there. Do I think some of them are satellites? Yeah, maybe some of them, but a lot of them are not satellites. A lot of them, I have no idea what they are other than they're not us. And if there are satellites up there, I think they're being held up by hydrogen balloon technology which we've been doing with NASA since the 1950s. Look it up. Look up the NASA high-altitude balloon programs. What's the difference between that and, you know, what what they're describing as satellites that are floating around? This one's called Translation for Flat Earth Clues. I'm trying to load it. Let's see here. Uh, Mark, I have another question. Oh, he wrote me before. Are you involved in any work to establish an alternative system to replace the current monetary system? Uh, no, I am not. Do you have faith in the flat earth movement can achieve enough momentum to make the world stop spinning as it is so to say? Yes, I do. I have thought about alternative systems for a long, long time, but I couldn't find the first rolling stone to get people involved. The, the flat earth, however, creates a lot of energy. And if harnessed correctly, could be that one. I was thinking about what will happen after people settle the scientific debates. English is not his primary. And how we're going to move on with everything. I know for a fact that the current enslavement system isn't working 24-7. So it will become rougher by the day to get people back into reality. Just wanted to know your plans for the Flat Earth Movement. And what is the next move after spreading the truth? Have you talked to Michael Tellinger from the Ubuntu movement already? I don't think I have. He might be the key ingredient. Uh, much respect, John from Germany. Uh, okay, so he's German. The uh, Do I know what the next move after everybody finds out everything is? No, because the, the mainstream media and the powers that be are going to try to take the reins at that point. And we'll just have to see. We'll, we, we will have to react as needed. This one's called... Watch International Space Station construction time lapse on YouTube. And yeah, when I open up the construction time lapse on YouTube, it's completely CGI. The whole thing is exactly just CGI, which it would be because nobody bothered apparently taking any pictures of the construction of the ISS because they don't have any because it's not up there. It's not what, what it's described as being. So there should be a fantastic time lapse that you could edit you know, rough shots at the very least that you can edit in Photoshop and, and Studio Pro and do something with it. But no, the entire construction time lapse is CGI from beginning to end. It's not even not even close. It's not even debatable. In fact, I'm pretty sure they admit it. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark was wondering if you could help me about some questions, please. How do the tides work? I, same, I listen to the fir first person. How do the moon phases work? What about long longitude and latitude, etc.? So much I would like to learn. I don't know where to start. I rang your home number and left a message. Will you be going to North Carolina on no in November? Yes. And had you gone to fe2017.com, you would have known that I was going to be a keynote speaker on the first day and co-hosting the award show with Patricia Sh Steer on the second day, the last event of the, the conference. Regards, Denise from Queensland, Australia. And I th hopefully she knows by now because it was uh, at least uh, it was almost two months. She sent that email. And again, apologize that uh, that it takes me so long to get back to emails. I'm One day I just won't be able to get to them. But I'm gonna, until that day comes where I'm overwhelmed, I'm going to keep reading them. So please do send them. This one's called Flat Earth Theory. Hi, Mark. I am reading about the Flat Earth Theory. Have you contacted NASA? If so, what did they say? <laughs> Regards, Matt Simpson. Uh, I usually went to NASA, and NASA completely disagrees with us. They've had astronauts respond. They've had scientists respond. They've had engineers respond. And they all say that it's absolutely ludicrous. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark. It's Carl. My wife and I met you in Atlanta last week. I forgot... Uh, you didn't do text. Don't blame you. Anyway, we got a couple tickets. A VIP suite. Hope to see you there. Yeah, I hope to see Carl and uh, I believe it was Brandy. Brandy or Randy. Uh, I can't remember which one. Uh, either way, she looks like Aaron Andrews. Uh, very pretty. 
And uh, yeah, I hope to see. I met these guys at Atlanta when I was visiting um, Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon for the religious debate on flat Earth. They were they were going chapter and verse against chapter and verse. That was fun. So yes, I will be looking forward to these guys in Raleigh. This one's called the Duncan Trussell Family Hour. Hi, Mark. Your work is amazing. Truly inspiring. Thank you. I would love to hear a discussion between you and Duncan Trussell on his podcast, uh, which DTFH, which stands for the Dunk, Duncan Trussell Family Hour. His enlightenment combined with yours could be a fascinating journey to be sure. Thanks for considering Kellyanne Nagelli. And yeah, if, really, her name's Kelly Nagelli. That's awesome. That's a great name. Uh, I if he contacts me, great. Yeah, I, I haven't turned down any interviews yet, so would love to do it. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mike. Uh, that's uh, you know I'm, I'll forgive him for that because I get called Mike quite a bit. In fact, it's weird because my mother told me that initially I was supposed to be named Mike, and they changed their mind to Mark. So there you go. And one of my best friends growing up through high school was named Mike, so it's probably good that I, my name wasn't Mike. Anyway, my name is Tony Schultz. I am from Elkhart, Indiana, and I've seen your videos in the Flat Earth Theory. I am very intrigued by what I have discovered in my research. However, I do have a lot of questions. Perhaps you could help answer them or lead me in the right dis, in the right direction to discover them. Why would the government try to keep this a secret? Are you kidding me? Uh, once you figure out how to use it to your advantage, it's absolutely going to be a secret. Is it because they would lose control and power of, over us sheep? Yes, that would be one of the reasons, yeah. Another question, are there stars? Not like you know them, no. Are there lights up in the sky? Sure. No different than a planetarium. I looked at NASA pictures, and most of the pictures or video from NASA does not show any stars. Do you know why? Because they're worried about getting the constellations wrong. Because remember especially with the moon, if the date stamp is wrong, if it doesn't match up with where the star constellation should be, some nerd is going to figure that out and they're not going to have an answer for it. So the best answer was just to get rid of the stars entirely. Even if they were creating these videos and photos from Photoshop or editing them in some way, why wouldn't they add them in? They can't. You, you can't add them in because... Uh, once you do it, it's production continuity. Once you fake it back in the 60s, you have to keep it consistent. I'm sorry, it's just one of the rules. The Great Rift, do you think this is a crack in the firmament? Nah. Wouldn't water fall through? Yeah. Uh, if the 1950s Russia and U.S. fired off nukes into the sky way up near the firmament, uh, what do you think they were trying to accomplish? think they were trying to break through, <laughs> or at the very least measure, where this thing was. Uh, and then he follow, says, breakthrough to explore? Yeah, sure, maybe. Uh, sorry these questions are somewhat scattered. This flat earth theory is really interesting, and I wouldn't put it past our world leaders to keep this from us. If you have time, I would love to hear back from you. Thanks for your time, Tony Schultz. And hopefully Tony has continued his journey, because it's been a while since that email is written. This one's called Comment. Mark, I seem to remember when I was a child to quote from Jesus in the Bible, you will do works far greater than I, you will move mountains and roll back the heavens. The roll back in the heavens was an image that stuck in my head for my entire life for some reason. Nice presentation. I liked it. Henry. <laughs> Straight to the point. Like it, Henry. Thank you. This one's called Stop Sign Sticker Meme. Hello, Mark. Thanks for all the great work. I may be the only person who, has, who hasn't sent you a photo, so here you go. Ha, I've been spreading these around. Cheers from Denver, Brian. And the picture is a stop sign, which is a, basically it's a stop sign. Oh, it's a sticker. You put a below, below stop signs that says spinning. So eventually the stop sign says stop spinning and research flat earth. Nice. It's good. You can put it on any stop sign. I'm pretty sure it's... A, a misdemeanor, but eh. were you really going to do a good jail? I don't think so. This one's called Flat Earth Video YouTube. Hello, Mark. I was watching your YouTube video on Flat Earth, and I always wondered this. If the Earth was a globe and was spinning, then airplanes would not need to travel from point to point, but simply fly a few thousand feet up in the air and stall or go only a few degrees north and south, and eventually that part of the Earth would make its way around to meet the plane, if it's spinning any at all. And all they would have to do is land on point B. 
That's just my take. You make some very interesting observations in your video. Very thought provoking. Josie. Yep. All those points are good. And they're all out there on the internet at this point. This one's called Earth and the Moon and a whole bunch of question marks. Hello, Mark. I have a question about the Earth and the Moon. I have watched so with a whole bunch of O's, many videos supposedly taken from the moon by astronauts. They show the Earth in the background and it appears pretty much the same size as the moon. Now, am I wrong or shouldn't the Earth be very much bigger than they show us? In fact, shouldn't it be gigantic? Just wondering why this has never been addressed on any video that I have watched. What are your thoughts on this? Door Danitz. Yeah, the, the Earth should be a lot bigger from the moon should be a lot bigger. Remember, the, the Earth, if you believe the mainstream media, it's 8,000 miles across as opposed to 2,000 miles across from the moon. So it should be really big in the sky from the moon standpoint. And that is not what we saw. It should be rising. over. The, it should be a huge thing on the horizon. And there should be shots, should be some better shots with the moon. I mean, you've come to think of it. I, you just kind of jarred me here. Which is, you, how stunning would those pictures have been if you would have had the astronauts and the capsule with the Earthrise coming up uh, just on the horizon? The only Earthrise shots we saw, the Earth was already way up in there in the sky. You should have taken some low on the horizon. That would have been some amazing camera work, but they didn't because you know, that would have given the whole thing away. This one's called Just Two Questions. Mark, I'm a believer in the Flat Earth. Your Flat Earth Clues was the first video I watched on the subject. Thanks. I was hoping to get your opinion on two different problems I'm having. Number one, I've seen a few videos where people are claiming rockets are hitting the dome at, at approximately 72 miles up and videos that show AutoCAD calculating the sun to be approximately 2,000 miles up in the sky. Thoughts? Uh, you could mix the two, technically. I mean, the sun could be 2,000 miles up, but it might not be reachable. It could be outside of the dome, possibly, or it could be inside. I, I could go either way on that. Do I think the dome is only 72 miles up? Ooh, that's not a lot. I mean, that's not very high. It could explain why the rockets are arching over so fast, because if the dome was technically hundreds or even like 1,000 miles up, those rockets wouldn't have to arc over really really quickly you could you could wait until they were almost out of visual range and then the time lapse trails on the rockets wouldn't look so exaggerated so could be either number two i live in western kentucky right in the path of totality and i'm very excited about the eclipse yeah, you see the eclipse hasn't happened yet for him if the sun is a ball of light within the dome now how is it that when the moon passes in front of the sun it'll com be completely dark and be able to see the stars shouldn't the sun still be shining the back at the dome oh that's not a bad question any feedback would be awesome yeah but we don't know the dome technology we don't know the reflective surface we don't know exactly how the sun works is the sun really in the place when we look in the sky or is it just a projected image is a reflection from a different light source we don't know so uh, the bigger question from the eclipse because i was there in totality down in salem oregon when it happened was that how does a 2000 mile wide object like the moon how does the shadow shrink down to 70 miles and they'll say oh it's you know it's convex you know it it, it focuses the the shadow down it's like really because we can't do that here in in labs so how are you how are you proposing that plus it really matches up with our model way better meaning remember our shadows should only be the same size or larger we've all played with shadows when we were kids or even when we we're adults so if the sun and the moon, or let's say the moon in this case, is less than 50 miles wide, then a 70 mile wide shadow, that fits into our model way better than it does the uh, mainstream science model. Just saying. This one's called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. Mark, good morning. I... So I just finished watching your documentary. It was enthralling and left me wanting to know more. I've been really looking into finding out the truth lately. Here's my story. My name is Don. I've always held faith in God since I can remember I was born Catholic. I have also always been very intuitive and my gut never lied to me. I've gotten angry at our father. I mean, who hasn't? When he took my mom and then my dad both with cancer, it took me a while to realize that it was nothing personal. To make a long story short, it was never hard for me to understand God and to have faith. Jesus saved me a few years ago from alcohol, and I was rebaptized Christian. So now I am searching for the history and the truth about my world, my feelings, 
and my instincts. I feel that all of us have in us the ability to hear God. He put in us this ability to know things. We just need to pay it the proper attention. Anyway, enough about me. I was really curious about a few things from the video. The first thing is, I guess I am struggling with understanding of why people hide the truth. Why does Lucifer get so many under his belt? <laughs> Good point. Is it really the fake promises, or is it more of a threatening manner? If it is a threatening one, well, don't these people ever read the Bible? God tells us consistently to be afraid of nothing but him. And the second part of that has to do with the astronauts. Now, I understand they would not touch the Bible and lie. However, what stopped them from telling the truth to begin with? I guess I really don't understand what motivated them to keep the lie if they know God is up there. Uh, to answer that real quick before I get to the next one, it's like, why do people continue the, their lie when they know it's wrong anyway? Why do people continue to embezzle, to continue to abuse children, to continue to, I don't know, do something horrible like be a part of white slavery? Uh, or, you know, part of the slave trade, the Ivory Coast type thing. It's like, why, or any slavery, I shouldn't just say white, good Lord, that sounded horrible, didn't it? So, yeah, why do people do anything? It's because they're willing to roll the dice. They don't know the punishment structure. They don't know how it all plays out. People are willing to do mischievous things. Why does a kid steal a candy bar from a store? You know, he knows there could be problems, but he still does it. I know, you're a really, really honest person. My next question is, you noted in the video you had the links and stuff like the flight plans for us to view, but I did not see it anywhere. Probably because the video is a bit old. Yes, that is true. What I did was, as of the video, I got more and more videos. I had to figure out a way. I've, I've got 900 videos out there now. So when I make changes to the description, I have to basically blanket coverage everything. So all the descriptions are the same, and I update all the, the descriptions simultaneously. Saves me a ton of time, and you can do that in YouTube. For those of you making YouTube videos, you can update pretty much anything in mass. You just got to be careful when you do it. Uh, let's see, I'm kind of, uh, I don't follow trends. I follow my instincts and let God guide me. And he led me to your video for a reason. So I guess what I am asking you is where can I find more information? Can you hook me up with some great links, good books to look up, good videos to watch, to get me to my next step? Any information would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for your time. I love the video. I would love to see more of your work. If you have a site, thanks again. And God bless. Yeah. And, and I will put this in my list of things I got to send to her because she what some of the biggest mirrors I have out there they are got hiding God with the greatest lie ever and under the dome full documentary among others are not my channels they're just people that took my clues and mashed them up and they've got millions and millions of hits so hopefully in the last two months she's found it but I'm going to send her the flat earth short list for new people cross my fingers she hasn't seen it yet because then it'll be kind of fun Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Talk. Mark, good afternoon. I am looking for a speaker who would be willing to discuss flat earth theories in one of our meetings. Do you have any contacts that would be suitable? We're in the north of Scotland, UK. Thanks, Rob. And yes, I'm pretty sure I sent him the information on Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve up in Scotland. I'm pretty sure I sent him the info. Hopefully I did. So... This one's called Buzz Aldrin. Mark, is there any way for you or someone else that can get Buzz Aldrin to admit the truth before he dies? Flat Earther Becky Needham from Hudson, Florida. P.S. I really enjoy your videos. Thank you. Uh, Becky knew. No, and no Apollo astronaut's going to kill his legacy on his way out. I mean, there's only seven left. Probably soon to be six. I think one of them's in, in real trouble. The and it's amazing though that there's still seven left. Remember, you know, you're passing through the Van Allen radiation belts multiple times. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. Healthy is they, you know, they're still talking. Uh, let's see, debate challenge and twenty five thousand dollar challenge. Hey, Mark. Can you send me the info for the two challenges and what they entail, please? Entail, please. Going to pass the challenge on to all adamant globe believers. Looks like the Seattle meetup went great. Still waiting for something in Vancouver, BC. I think I might have to be the one to get the ball rolling on that. I can let you know. And could you help promote it, please? Mock, M-A-K. And yes, if anyone that's interested, they want to send the big money challenge, you can email Kathy Dunson. Her email address is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. That's Paralandra 77 at gmail.com. 
and the Vancouver BC one I think went okay. I, I'm sorry I couldn't attend. I was I was just way too busy. And hopefully there'll be more up there in Vancouver. This weekend I'm heading down to Los Angeles for a meetup. This one's called No Subject. I don't get a lot of no subjects. Hi Mark, my name is Reith. I'm from Northwest I'm a Northwest native living in Bellevue. I really appreciate what you do and feel that this is the key to opening up the avenue to truth to all. Now, I'm not the most internet savvy, so I'm having trouble finding a good source of the flat earth current events, local if possible, as well as other good ways to get involved. Many, many thanks, Wreath. And I'm sorry that he missed, probably missed the last meetup. Yeah, just type in flat earth meetup and type in a city near you. Or type in flat earth meetup and just see a list of cities that have had them recently uh, we we've pretty much hit all the major cities right now this one's called sniper coriolis effect mark if snipers allow for the coriolis effect that would mean any shot fired on the equator in a westerly direction that was traveling less than a thousand miles an hour <laughs> would not reach its target should be a fairly easy, easy experiment to sort out rob now that's that's actually not the coriolis effect would affect it more in this way you would have to adjust, and it wouldn't be just snipers, it would be anybody shooting any sort of projectile. In fact, even planes would have to adjust for the Coriolis effect, meaning, especially planes, because you're flying from, if you're going like north and south over the globe, you would have to change your heading base because the speed of the earth would change. As you're, you know, because remember the North Pole, if you believe in the globe, the North Pole is spinning at zero miles an hour, the equator is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, and then it's incremental between those two points. So, in, but when it comes to short range, you know, 50 miles or, or less, you would still have to deal with some sort of Coriolis effect because you'd have to know which way you were pointing. North, south, east, west, you would have to adjust your fire. And to date, I've never heard of any military guy, and I've talked to a bunch, that has to account for it, to account for it whether, whether it be a rifle, cannon, missile, torpedo, you name it, they don't have to adjust for it. And if you're a shooter out there listening to this, you know full well. There's only two things that are on a scope that you can adjust. Windage and elevation. That's it. There's not a third one for the Coriolis effect. I don't care if you have a Barrett 50. You're not going to adjust for the Coriolis effect. No one has ever told me. In fact, I had a, a, a Marine sniper instructor taught for three years that it is not in the manual. Everybody's heard about it. Nobody uses it. There you go. It's my little rant, the Sniper Coriolis effect. This one's called, Hello. All right. Mark, watched your vid, which was really interesting. I came to the conclusion and investi on investigation some time ago that our Earth is neither spinning nor traveling through space. Therefore, a possible explanation to the lack of plane tracking over water could be that there is no such thing as a geostationary satellite's all tracking is land-based. There you go. And I didn't even have to tell her. Radio and TV were around long before satellites existed. Also true. Uh, regarding the flat Earth model, I have a few questions. Why can't the North Star be viewed once you go below 23 degrees on the equator? Because it's a separate projection system. Remember, the people or things or whatever you want to call it that built this place wanted to create the globe illusion at some point. So I believe in multiple projection systems, which would be easy to do if the structure was very, very big. Think of uh, making a planetarium that's 100 miles wide. You would need multiple projection systems. And if you did that, you could completely accomplish the southern stars versus the northern stars. I do realize how there is no such, no such thing on a flat Earth, but you take my point. How do you explain the different rotation of the stars when viewed from the sun? Yeah, I just did that. I'm genuinely interested in your response. Regards, D. McDonald. P.S. I all have also have come to the conclusion by observation that the sun and moon are not in space, but much closer than we are told, and the moon has its own light. Would be interested in your thoughts. Hopefully by this time they have, uh, they have gotten so deep into the flat earth that they already know this. This one's called Help. Need Atlanta Flat Earth Contact. Hey, Mark. Bummer, bummer. I did not know about the Atlanta FE gathering on August 5th. Oh, wow. It's, I know it's October. Could you please give me some contacts in Atlanta so I can get more involved? I've been sharing FE YouTubes with a lot of my friends. Thanks, Mark. Make an amazing day, Leah. That's from Leah Schweitzer. And hopefully she has found some people by now. Hopefully Leah has found some people by now. This one's called SW43. Again... I'm sorry, Mark, this is Sven, 
literally S-V-E-N. I forgot to ask you the most important question. Why did this round earth conspiracy start at all? And why have we been lied to for so many decades? Because you want to keep the population acting as naturally as possible. And once their technology starts ramping up, and it doesn't take that long, you can't have them thinking that there's an edge to the earth because that's all they're going to care about. It's true. We, we Human beings hate confinement. And it doesn't matter how big the confinement is. We hate it. We're, we're just very, very curious. Uh, NASA could have still had a space program to explore what's in outer space, though. They could have come up, come out up front by saying the Earth is flat. No, no, they couldn't have. It's, it's too disrupting to the civilization. They weren't going to take that chance. Uh, this is about the only question that, that's mind-boggling to me, though the answer might be the same as it is for cancer research. Eh, kinda. I am convinced to the bones that many years ago, researchers found an indefinite cure to cancer. Though if the research would stop the pharma industry, who in turn controls our government would lose out on billions and billions of dollars annually. Please kindly clarify my question. Thank you again, Sven. And yeah, to answer well, the second part is really easy, Sven, which is there is no money in the cure, only in the treatment, which is awful, but true. Let's see here. This one's called More Tables to Come. It's from Corey Admonson, who makes some of the Flat Earth tables. Thank you, Mark. The video you did was incredible. I'm very blessed ever since I woke to the Flat Earth, and I thank you for that. I have an idea. Let me know if you think for the Flat Earth Conference, do you think Chris Ponty and I could make or build something or kind of a main attraction? I could do wonders with Chris if he was interested. Hopefully. I, I think these two have already gotten together. With my building skills and Chris's dome world skill, maybe we could create something special for the conference. I don't even know Chris, so something uh, that could have to be addressed to him. Can you make that happen? I'm pretty sure I had these two get a hold of each other. I'm, it's a hard... It, this thing's gotten so big, it's hard for me to keep track of literally everything. So this one's called Flat Earth Skeptic. Help prove me wrong. Mark, I'm a proud glober. Can you prove me wrong? How would you convince me the Earth is flat? I want to do a phone interview with a diehard glober. I'm still a fan of the flat Earth. It's just an entertainment to me. Flat Earth would make a damn good sci-fi movie. Yes, it would. And it's amazing that it hasn't been. you got to ask yourself that. And as far as people that want to do a phone interview, sorry, you got to have a website or a debunking site or something. You, you, can't just, you can't just be a, a person that believes in the globe. I, I, there's just not enough time in the day for me to talk to those people. Uh, but as far as proving them wrong, take your pick. Everybody's got their, their best answer out there. He, he knows them all. He just isn't, he isn't there yet. Although this one was written back in the middle of August, so maybe he knows by now. This one's called Love and Light from South Africa. Good morning, Mark. At least here it is. <laughs> it's funny. I hope you are well. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for sharing your research. I've been feeling so stuck, yet knowing that there had to be more to this life, but wasn't really sure what. Your videos have literally given me reason to stay alive. Wow. Many thanks, Queen Mashagon. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm, but I, yeah, Flat Earth does have that, that sort of influence. I, I, it doesn't completely surprise me. I just don't get a lot of emails that say that. It's awesome. This one's called Hiding God Video. Mark, I loved your video. They are hiding God. I wish I had seen it sooner. I'm a huge skeptic, but very interested in the subject. Do you have any updates on your Flat Earth research? Are you still actively involved in finding new information? I checked your channel, and there is not much there recently. Thanks, Jason. And yeah, again, when you look at the Hiding God channel, that's not my channel. So I have to, every once in a while, I have to, and I already sent this guy the link to my main channel and said, yeah, I still do a few things. 900 videos later. This one's called Solar Eclipse. Hey, Mark, trust you've been well. Cool to see you and Patricia out in Seattle, especially at the Museum of Flight. I want some of those airplane models. One thought on the solar eclipse coming up. I am wondering if the sun will actually pass behind the moon or if the sun is just going to shut down its light on its own. Yeah, it's a good point because that's what other people noticed after the eclipse was that the light is just shutting down. The, the sun is self-eclipsing. Like the moon is uh, self crescenting self self dimming as well where the moon creates its own uh, 
uh, waxing and waning crescents. I don't think it could be those other orbs that were filmed during the partial eclipse of 2015. It has been shown that the moon is translucent when not full, so I'm curious how it could actually block the sunlight. But on the other hand, the way the shadow is cast across the nation from west to east makes me think that it really is the sun catching up to the moon and that the vantage point of the people out west see this first because the way the sun overtakes the moon as they are circuiting east to west, I would think think you should be able to see part of the moon if it's really there. Interesting stuff. Have fun down in Oregon on Monday. My website for bringing together the Flat Earth community is almost done. See ya, Mike in Minnesota. And yeah, he's a regular caller to Strange World, if I'm not mistaken. This one's called Flat Earth Videos. Mark, are you still researching and making videos? I find them to be very interesting. I'm looking into more Flat Earth evidence. Keep doing what you're doing. Joffrey. And yes, I am. And you know what? I will hopefully, you know what? I'm going to just email him and shoot him a thing. I would do it right now, but I don't want to break my momentum. This one's called Article Gooner, Gooner, Google Lunar X Prize Contestants Now Get More Time to Send Their Robotic Rovers to the Moon. Yeah, I called this one. Hi, Mark. Just want, just thought this was quite interesting. If you've been saying for a long time this would never happen, and again, you are right, as this has been extended since 2007. I didn't realize this thing has been kicked down the can that many times, or kicked, kicked down the road that many times. I am sorry. Cheers, uh, his name is Mark, and the article is about how the Google Lunar X Prize contestants now get more time to send the robotic rovers to the moon, and it's being pushed out at least until the end of March 2018, and they'll kick it down the road again. Nobody's going anywhere. Nobody's this 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 challenge is never ever going to happen. The fact that they had to extend it meant that nobody was going to make the deadline of the end of 2017. And if you don't know what that prize is, it, Google is offering $20 million to somebody who could send a probe to the moon and, and beam back pictures. Five co countries said they were going to do it. None of them were ready. And so here we are. It's never going to happen. This one's called The World. Mark, I believe the world is flat, but I have a question. What did the world look like when it was first seen? What do we look in, what do we look in space since we are not round? What do we look in? What are we looking at in space? Said said Jonathan. We are looking at the the ceiling, the the roof of a planetarium. That's it. There doesn't have to be space. If ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people believe the illusion, you go with the illusion. You don't have to build space. The only reason you're even thinking space is because you were raised with it. You were raised with the movies. You were raised with the NASA stuff. You were raised with science. You know, giving you all these amazing distances. So there you go. This one's called New Flat Earth Continent. Hi, Mark. I'm a longtime viewer of Strange World and The Secret Show on YouTube. Well, you asked for new folks who have information regarding Flat Earth. Well, LV prepared a six-hour musical arrangement for the eclipse. A soundtrack for, for you, might say. It's, well, it's full of Flat Earth clues, by the way. I'm reading this verbatim, and I, I have to correct grammar and stuff on the fly sometimes. Sometimes I just don't. Uh, well, it's full of Flat Earth clues, so I thought I'd take my musical Flat Earth clues to the chat that made the AV Flat Earth clues. The mix is separated into three parts following the different phases of the eclipse, and I'm going to point you in the direction of part two as the track list includes... Oh, and he gave me a list of songs. Uh, I did reach out to British... Uh, why beer, but I don't think he understood what it was. I'm hoping that you do. All three parts flow into a six-hour arrangement that I'm going to maybe stream the day of the eclipse. Not sure how. Any promotion would be great, although uh, I'd, be happy for you, I'd be happy for you to listen and give some feedback. I see what's happening here. Spell checker is taking over and replacing words. Now, on to some other news. I don't think this was covered enough as it's more visual proofs. I live in Fleetwood, England, right next to a beach where I walk my dogs daily. On many occasions, I see pro photographers on the beach taking photos. And then a couple of weeks ago, I realized what they were doing as I could see the Isle of Man with my own eyes. Fleetwood, UK to the Isle of Man is 100 kilometers. Then I looked online to find this info has always been there, but never mentioned. Have a look at the webpage. I hope that some of this is useful. Please contact me with any feedback. Yours sincerely, Phil. I am sorry, Phil. I had not listened to any of your music until now. Uh, I, uh, 
Big, big apologies. I will try to listen to that music when I get a chance. This one's called... Thank you for your videos. Researching as a Baran would. Acts 17 verse 11. And that's the whole thing. From Carol and Mar Margie, or Margie Sanders. From Abraham's Promise Ministries. Huh. Well, very welcome. This one's called... Your video. Hello, Mark. Mr. Pepper here again. Honestly, I don't remember Mr. Pepper. I was curious what your thoughts were on my questions and information shared in my last email. Uh, let's see if there's... If there's a, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to read his last one. Sorry about that. This one's called Tectonic Plates. Mark, how is the movement of Earth's surface through tectonics explained in your theory? It's no different than it would be on a globe. Tectonic system can be on a flat model as well. Not hard. I mean, I'm really, that's all, I, that's all I can say about it. In fact, if you want to see something interesting, look at the ring of fire on the flat earth model. It becomes literally a straight line of fire. And just right down the middle of the map. In fact, I'm looking at the, from the tip of South America all the way to Australia. It's a line of fire. Fascinating. This one's called gravity. Mark, hi. So how does the Earth being flat overcome the effects of gravity? That's from Joyful. You know, I'm you, at this point, uh, I'm not even going to address it here. You, because you already know, you should already know the gravity argument by now. This one's called, so what's next? Mark, you are coming up with all these details on flat Earth. Well, what's next? What do we do with this knowledge? Maybe it does not matter if the earth is flat or not, just as long as the right spiritual belief system is in place. How do we progress? Uh, progress like we're, we're doing right now. First, you've got to get everybody on the same page. You've got the hundredth monkey effect has to take over eventually, which is everyone's got to, we, we get past the, the debate side and people just accept it. Uh, what the powers that be do with it, we don't know. But as far as the, the thing where he says, well, it doesn't matter if the earth is flat or not, absolutely it does. But it doesn't matter until it's real to you. Meaning, and I've been kind of pushing this lately because it's somewhat, you know, there's darker versions of this, but I think this one is, is pretty palatable, which is, I, it's the same thing as if you try to tell somebody and, and it escalates as they get older. Let's say you're 30, telling a 30 year old that they're adopted and it's the first time they've ever heard it. The, the, the first thing is going to be denial all the way. And until they get past it, you know, you can pile up all the information you want on your side. It's like, no, I really think you're adopted. Until they actually click over to the whole adoption thing, it's not real to them. So it doesn't matter. It's like, well, I don't believe you that I'm adopted. So it doesn't change my life. But the second they believe it, the second they believe that they're adopted, oh yeah, you better, it's, then everything changes for them. Then all of a sudden they have to re-examine all the memories of their life starting to where when they talked and all their earliest memories of their parents. That's the sort of, of core shaking that this does. Same, very, very similar because when you're in flat earth, you, you know, once you click over to flat earth, you have to remember all the way back to when you first heard it was a globe. That's why it's so, that's why it's so jarring to people because it's like a memory ripple that goes back in time back through all the the, the, the long-term memories that you have and it affects all of them and it, it's really overpowering much like if you were found out you were adopted now does does making um the, the is it a dark thing that you find out you're adopted well it's different it, it unhinges you and so that's why it's it's it affects you but until that point literally until that point that you believe no it doesn't affect you because i don't believe it it's like, I don't believe it. I, I'm adopted, so it doesn't change my life. But yeah, that morning you wake up, it's like, holy crap, I was adopted. Yeah, you'll be losing sleep for a while. This one's called Another Miss Song. Uh, from Mark, this is not in the tiny URL. Did I miss this song? It's not on my FE 2017 music list yet. Holy crap. The official music video, Charles McDowell Jr. NASA lied, a flat earth song. Uh, skip. Hopefully, I added this. It's it was published on Flat Earth Chick. Tell me how they're in line. All right, you know what? I'm going to add that to my Flat Earth 2017 list, and hopefully, it doesn't come back as a duplicate. We'll definitely try that. 
This one's called Not Really Flat Earth, but Interesting. Hey Mark, Photo Helix is more of a YouTube channel, but you mentioned around the 17, but you're mentioned around the 17 minute mark. And also the other guy says he is working for NASA. And the video is called, Wow, NASA Engineer Speaks Out, Antarctica, Flat Earth, Mandela Effects, Solar Eclipse, and more. Hmm. All right, if I'm mentioned at the 17 minute mark, I am going to listen to it. And yeah, if you guys find anything where I'm actually mentioned, by all means, uh, send it to me because I, I can't catch it all, obviously. Uh, we have time for a few more. This one's called, Hey Mark. Mark, good advice and not having me... Sorry, this, that was about a meetup. Um, that has already happened, so we're not going to talk about that. This one's called Truth Seeker. Hello, Mark. My name is Raul, and I've seen most of your videos on YouTube, and at first I thought BS or fake news, and in one of your videos, I've seen something that really bothered me so much to the point that I was speechless, and that was the whole flat earth maps and matching them up with the globe and the planes routes they would fake. Do you recommend any other videos I should watch or maybe books on the flat earth subject? Thank you for your time. I'm sure you're a very busy man. Respectively, Raul Salazar. And you know what? He's going into that. I'm going to be so busy after this one. Sending people links. Busy day. This one's called Globe Map Protection. Hey Mark, Kyle here from Northeastern British Columbia. Huge fan. Hope you're doing well and for the international conference goes excellently. Two-ish years ago, I came across the idea of the flat earth, and like everyone else, the idea sounded beyond ridiculous. Tried debunking it as I thought it should be super easy to do, only to find out that my world was all a lie. Haha, ha, I'm the kind of guy who will follow the truth wherever it leads, but I really didn't want this to be true, like at all. But lo and behold, boom, flat, haha. Ha. Changed my life and I see things with new eyes. Thank you for the really big part you played in it. You're the real deal, putting yourself out there like that knowing full well that the fan would react to the incoming dookie <laughs> what? you're an inspiration good sir anyway i thought the other day you know how the mercator projection is the one everyone recognizes right if the gall peters projection shows more accurate land sizes why are the pictures of earth showing a mercator sizing wouldn't the land masses be out of whack i guess this is something you've thought of or that has been brought up to you before but on the off chance it hasn't it's just another bullet in the magazine that will take down the stupid globe anyway would love to hear your thoughts on it and stay flat why are the pictures of earth showing the mercator sizing it really varies what the the pictures of the earth you're looking at most of the globes actually use more of a, a modified gall peters version where greenland is the the actual size it should be the pictures of from the earth from space eh, again it really depends what year you're looking at because they, they they've covered a wide range of perspectives over the years so this one's called we'll do let's see if we can do two more we'll end on a good one if we can find one uh this one's called hey hi mark just wanted to tell you the weather channel called the weather channel and left them this message why do you continue to perpetuate the lie about the earth we are not spinning we are not on the globe the sun and the moon are the same size i couldn't help myself regards barbara it's pretty good barbara almost good enough to end on do i have any more uh this one's called earth mark the earth is stationary the bible says so everything revolves around it if you're doubting the creator for creating earth in the shape of a ball and keeping water from spilling you should be ashamed of yourself I study your propaganda and it does not make sense. Stop polluting minds of zero common sense people. That's from Yurli Davba. Wait a minute. So is he saying that the earth is stationary, but it's a ball? The earth is stationary. Bible says for everything revolves around it. If you're doubting the creator for creating earth in the shape of a ball. Yeah. Do you show me in the Bible where it says that the creator created a ball? Earth is flat. It's motionless. Tell me where the tower of Babel was going if it's on a ball tell me where, how joshua stopped the sun and the moon in the sky we're not ending on that one no Let's see if we can find a better one you know what this one is a poem and this is the one i'm gonna read on oh it's perfect okay we're gonna end on a poem it's from alan it's called the biggest lie i actually i have not seen this yet uh but he, i know it's a poem because this is the biggest lie and the whole thing is center centered down the middle of the page the most massive conspiracy plot of them all is we live on a rock which is round or oblate 
or bizarrely the shape of a pear as it spins like a top. We've been told all our lives that this earth from New York to Malaysia to Perth is a fast moving ball, microscopically small when compared to a vast universe. When Copernicus published his lies of a spherical globe in the guise of demonstrable fact, he committed an act that his Jesuit friends authorized. Later on, Charles Darwin arrived with a ludicrous tale he contrived that a singular cell over quite a long spell formed the basis for all that's alive. Darwin claimed we descended from apes who were once alligators and snakes and mosquitoes and mice and cockroaches and lice with unique anatomical traits. Truth be told, God created a plane which is flat and a splendid domain where we've all made our home underneath a vast dome since the era, the era of Abel and Cain. And we're also not moving through space at a truly remarkable pace. If we were then the stars, Saturn, Venus, and Mars, from our vision would all be erased. But what Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye, each clearly a corporate shill, have presented as truth with no substantive proof, is a pile of satanic ill will. Many people have said I'm insane and have lost all control of my brain, but they won't answer me when I ask how we see from great distance the town of Brisbane. There you go. That's from Neil Dickinson. Awesome. And, and his website is www.litwit, L-I-T-W-I-T dot C-A. You know what? That's what we're going to end on, a poem. And everybody else, you're going to have to wait till next time. I'll, I'll do it after I get back from the Los Angeles meetup, which I'm going to be heading to two days from now. You can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Thank you for everybody that's written in so far. Apologies for how long it takes me, but I will get to as many as I can. And until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>